Hey guys, this is the Instant Camera Guy here. Um, this is a video I've been wanting to do for quite some time now. Um, and that is some troubleshooting uh, if you are getting images that you're not very happy with. Um, one of sort of the, the mo most common questions I get asked is uh, so something along the lines of, oh, what's, what's going on with my film? Uh, I'm getting undeveloped patches. Well, what's up with the random three bars in my images? Uh, my images are overexposed, etc., etc. Um, and I wanted to do sort of a video just to explain a little bit about why some of these uh, so-called defects appear in the film, as well as some ways that you can avoid it. Now, before I continue, um, I just want to go into a little bit about the history of the Impossible Project. Now, the Impossible Project, for those who don't know, is the company that is currently making new Polaroid film for SX70, Spectra, and 600 cameras. Now, long story short, and it's a, it's a massive history, I, I won't go into it in, in much depth, but long story short, Polaroid shut up their factory in about 2009, so SX70, Spectra, and 600 film finished. There's no more. Um, a new company started called Impossible Project, who were made via, uh, who were made of a team of investors as well as some of the factory foremen. Uh, basically, bought out the old Polaroid factory in the Netherlands and started on a mission to reproduce the film again. Um, so, what you've got to remember is, in 2009, the factory's closed. Yeah, so. They shut down all the all the machinery. Now, it's one thing to shut down the machinery, but you've got to remember that film, uh, this instant Polaroid film, is made with chemicals. So a lot of the companies that were supplying Polaroid with the chemicals also shut down, um, and many of them that were supplying Polaroid with company uh, with chemicals, that was all they were doing. So this X company existed, and it was their job purely just to supply Polaroid with a certain chemical for their film, and that's all they did. So, when Polaroid shut down their factory, it not only shut down the production of film, but also the chemicals required to make the film. Now, as a result, uh, as, as well as some whole trade secret and, and copyright issues, Impossible Project were not able to totally reproduce the original style of film, um, for the reasons that I just explained. So, some of the chemi companies, the chemicals that they were making were announced to be unenvironmentally friendly, others shut down completely and just stopped making this stuff. So, Impossible Project, one of their main hurdles was to come up with a new series of chemicals that would allow instant film to become a possibility. Now, when Polaroid first made integral films such as this, it took over seven years. So, seven years of literally just chemical engineering, trial and error, trial and error, trial and error, for seven years until they were satisfied with a product. Now, even then their product wasn't perfect. For the first year that SX-70 film was out, um, the batteries that were actually built into the packs were made by a company called Rayovac, who made batteries, and it turned out that the chemicals that they were using in the batteries that actually powered the cameras were leaking gases, which would actually turn the film blue. So, you've got to remember that even when Polaroid released film for the first time, it wasn't perfect. And that was after seven years, seven years of um, sort of production experimentation before they released a, a version that they were happy with. Um, the other thing to remember is that Polaroid had buckets of money. Um, the reason Polaroid had so much money is because one of the first inventions that Dr. Edwin Land um, made was polarizing filters, which uh, photography people and people who own a pair of sunglasses will know prevent reflected light. Now, when he invented this polarizing filter, the U.S. military went, "Hey, wouldn't that be great to put on our uh, put on the goggles of our um, aviators and, and pilots, and that would give them an advantage over the enemy?" So the U.S. military gave the Polaroid Corporation stacks and stacks and stacks and stacks of money um, that then enabled them to make instant cameras and. and do all this stuff that would otherwise have been impossible because, you know, no one's going to want to fund it. Um, so anyway, so that's something to keep in mind. So, going back to the Impossible Project, they started up um, pretty much by selling prototype film. Um, so this is film that wasn't perfect yet, but you've got to remember that they've got to recoup some of their losses somehow. 
So they teamed up with Ilford, uh, the first few batches of film they released were black and white, then I think late 2010, early 2011, they started releasing colour. Now, a lot of these new films that Impossible Project were releasing were, were sort of great. Um, they were great for the first few months, but they were prone to problems because they are, in fact, prototypes. It's just they had to sell the prototypes to the general public, otherwise, where else were they going to get their money from, if you can sort of understand. Um, so they've got to make X amount of batches at once. If they don't make these batches uh, and, and then sell these batches, how are they going to get funding to create even better batches? So it's sort of like a vicious cycle that's ongoing. So that gave Impossible Project sort of a lot of bad press. In 2010-2011, um, a lot of people thought Impossible Project was sort of a laughing stock and they sort of forget to take this sort of stuff into account. So it's for these reasons um, that sometimes the film does funny things. Um, so I'm going to run through a few of the, the more common issues specific to Impossible Project film, uh, and then I'll run through a few that's just film in general. So where should I begin? Um, let's begin with the bar effect. So, quite often, uh, and this is more common in black and white films, you'll get sort of these three bars happening there. Um, the amount of people that come to me with this kind of film and go, oh, my camera must be broken, uh, something's wrong with it, uh, my photos are just turning out rubbish, come fix it for me. Um, when the whole time it was basically the film. Now, the reason it does this, if we flip over the image, you'll see three little puffy pods. Now these pods contain the developing chemicals which will develop your film. So what happens is your camera has a series of rollers, so when it ejects the film it goes through the rollers, which break the pods and basically push the chemicals underneath this clear bit of plastic all the way along the film negative and then that develops the film. And your image will appear onto the clear bit of plastic allowing you to see it. Now, because of the experimental nature of the film, um, it was prone to aging. So the different chemicals in the, in the pods basically aged at different rates uh, and underwent different chemical transformations over time. Now this was worse if you stored the film in a hot environment. So if you stored the film like in, a, in, a, in your sort of drawer by your window where it got really hot in the summer, um, it would start to age these pods. Now if you kept the film cool it tended to do it uh, sort of less and even different batches of film were prone to aging um, at different rates. So I typically found, especially with the earlier batches, that the standard PX600 film worked like a treat. So the standard PX600 silver shade was fine. Maybe one out of eight frames had a bar. When UV Plus came out, which was a, a later version, the bar effect was much more pronounced and it, it happened on a lot more frames. Um, and so basically there's nothing you can do to prevent this. It's just bad luck. If you're getting this on film that you've recently purchased, it probably hasn't been stored properly. You've got to remember it is experimental film to begin with. Impossible Project are improving. Their latest batches are pretty much getting on par with Polaroid's original stuff. This typically only happens to the older batches of film that were made in 2010, 2011. Um, so there's nothing wrong with your camera. It's just the film. Now to prevent this, store your film properly, keep it in a fridge, uh, and basically the aging will happen at a, at a, a lesser rate. Um, so, I mean, this will happen with any integral film, so that's a, a shot of spectra film. Again, there's three pods under there, it's, it's the same thing. That puts me on to the undeveloped patch. So, this is the complaint I hear about the most. I get people say, what the heck is all this brown, brown crap on my, on my picture, what's going on here? The reason for that happening is exactly the same as the reason for the bars. It's basically the pods are aging and drying out at different rates. So obviously this pod here on the back just dried out a hell of a lot faster than the rest. So as the developer goes, um, because it's so dry it just doesn't spread all the way. And so what you're seeing underneath is the actual negative. So that's what the negative looks like underneath the developer and it's just being revealed because the developer hasn't spread enough. So when the developer doesn't spread at all bunches in this sort of super concentrated area, and then the developer that does cover it tends to go funny as well. So this one here has just gone totally orange, and this is supposed to be a shot of black and white film. Again, 
it's not your camera. Uh, there is absolutely nothing wrong with your camera, it's just the batch of film. Um, this is not just something that happens to Impossible Project 2, it happens to the original Polaroid film. So, this is a shot uh, that I took while I was testing a camera, and this is actually expired original brand Polaroid film, 600 film, uh, and because it expired in... when did that expire? It expired in about 2007, and this was shot 2013, so that's six years of expiry. The pods just turned to crap, basically. They, they aged and dried out. So, when the film went through the rollers, the developer didn't really spread. All you've got here is this sort of, uh, sort of framing of my face. Um, and it's not even Impossible Project film. This happened to the Polaroid film too. It was just more prone to happen to the Impossible Project film due to their experimental nature. Now, as I said, they are getting better. This was 2011 batch film that I'm holding up now. Uh, the 2010 batch film did it too. The later batches, 2012, 2013, uh, and beyond this, into the future, won't do it as much. There's nothing wrong. Um, Impossible Project tried to address this issue by telling you to uh, sort of change your film door if you owned an SX70 camera, or by doing some weird technique where you'd hold the door in a certain way. Um, that's a load of rubbish, but I'll, I'll talk about that in a later video. That's sort of too complicated for what I'm talking about now. Um, so those two are my main complaints that I get. I get people asking, what's up with the bars? What's up with the undeveloped patches? Um, the other sort of complaints I get are, what's up with the funny colours? Why, why do my colours look strange? Um, typically, again, this was an issue more with the prototype film. So this was a type of film called PX70 First Flush. So this was designed for SX70 cameras and was one of the first SX70 films that Impossible Project made. It's supposed to be colour film, but as you can see, the only real colours you get are sort of some reds coming out, a heck of a lot of blue, and maybe a bit of beige. Again, your camera is not broken, it is the film. It is prototype, experimental film, made in 2010. You still get this packs floating around on eBay, people selling them as brand new. People use them in their camera, they wonder what the heck's going on. It's the film. Go out and buy a later batch of brand new colour film, um, Currently, the video is being made in 2013, so buy the latest batch you can. The film and the colours will be a lot better because of the improvement. Remember, Polaroid originally took seven years. Impossible to predict at this stage that when this stuff came out, it had only been going for a few months. So, considering you got anything at all appearing on this photo, is it's, it's an amazing achievement. Um, so, in particular, the PX70 First Flush, which are these three example photos here, these tended to develop better with a lot of heat. So, if you were shooting in a studio example, a blow dryer was able to make the film develop really nicely, and you got a lot more colours out. So, that one a lot more of the brown showed out. Um, still not perfect, though. Um, this is another early batch of PX70 film. Again, very blue. This wasn't first flush. This, uh, sorry, this wasn't... Yeah, this stuff was PX70 push, this was PX70 first flush, again, very, very blue, it's just the film. Here's some PX100s, this is some early black and white, it went very orange, still fairly nice, I actually quite like the effect, it's very, very grainy. Uh, again, it's the film, it's not your camera. This was some later 600 films, this is about 2011 batch. I don't know what the heck happened in the month of July and August 2011, uh, but the batches of film they were making were absolutely rubbish. Um, it tended to go very beige, purple, and blue. These are sort of the only colours that would appear on your 600 film. Um, again, it was just, just due to a bad batch. Um, don't be alarmed if you get some old generation 600 colour film and this happens. Or if nothing develops at all. It was just the batch of film. Um, and sometimes you can manage to pick up some expired Polaroid brand film. So this film that I'm holding up in my hands expired in 2009, and as you can see, the colours, although nice, went very brown. And this is just because this was original Polaroid brand film that expired back in 2009. Um, blues tend to come out very nice. These, if you can score a pack of the expired Polaroid film from around 2009, grab it. It's a great opportunity to shoot on a type of film that no longer exists anymore. The 09, 08, 07 batches still typically work very well, if not a little bit brown.